So this is gonna be a two-part episode, and I have JCTV with me here. Small little two-part thing. You don't worry, we are social distancing. Absolutely, we don't take chances here. Mm. <laughs> so he's on the other side. I'm on the other side, and we do have a bit of fit. And so JC, we're talking about um, the tight subject, yes. which we're going to touch on full uh, extent on your channel. Yes. And so. Origin. Let's deal with the origin, which we're going to discuss in full extent on your channel. What is the other part? Um, a lot of people miscon they misconstrue uh, Genesis chapter 14, yeah. and also how tithe was given in all together, because how tithe was given all together. Yeah. If you look at it from Genesis chapter 14, yeah. it was only given once. Okay. Okay. There wasn't a repetition. There was there wasn't a repetition of, of monthly or yearly or what. Abraham gave it once, and that was that. There was no time even when Isaac was born when Abraham gave tithe. So it was not a perpetual thing. Even the even the kids don't have a record. They don't have a, of doing it. Yeah. So already you lose it there when when somebody says when come to, to when bring a subject to say that I'm giving it according to uh, Genesis chapter fourteen. So that's out. That's out. So at what point then do we come to the subject of storehouse? The subject of storehouse, it was introduced, remember tithe was introduced um, as, a, as a statute to the, to the children of Israel in uh, Leviticus chapter 27. Particularly and to the Israelites, to the, no, to, no, Gentiles. no Gentile was involved. And then it was then repeated in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 22. In then, full extent, in of of different versions yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes. So then, what you then find is this time of the stores was when Hezekiah, during his reign, a lot of uh, uh, Levites, they were not supposed to work, remember? Yeah. They had gone to work. Mm. And then he says, guys, this is not how we were we, taught. According to Moses, we were taught that all the Levites that are supposed to be in the house, they are supposed to be in the house of, of God working, they are not supposed to be uh, to be in the fields. Okay. They had gone back to the fields. They were going to, to, to do other to, other to work for themselves. To work for themselves. But this is not a prophet. It's not a prophet. He's a king. He's a king. So let's be very clear here. Yeah. The person who makes this observation yeah. is a king yeah. trying to take care of this class of people because yes. they are trying to go back. Yes. Which was Hezekiah's entire move to yeah. get us back into the old practice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Continue from there. And then, when it was then introduced as a storehouse, it was because, uh, remember, the Levites would then sit with the, with, the, with, the, with the people of Israel, the other rest of the tribes, the Rubenites, the Gadias, and other mm -hmm. stuff. They would then sit together and then eat the tithe with the Levites. Then the remainder is what the, the Levites would then take and go with to their houses. The tithe was eaten. It was eaten together with them. With them. And then they had a portion. They, they had a portion that they would then get after the people have eaten. And that portion was so much such that they brought it and said, We have so much. The Levites have got, the, your people have got so much. They have been blessed. They have so much such that we have a lot of things that we are now we have to keep here. Because it was as a guy who introduced, saying, Let us bring these people back to their work. But we have so much, they have enough to eat, they also have enough for to them store. to store. Then he says, okay, let's build a storehouse. So in Second Chronicles chapter, chapter 31 verse 11, that's where that whole subject is tied. That's where the issue of the storehouse then came. Reference. Yeah. So it was not introduced by a priest, it was not introduced by a prophet, Introduced by a king. It was introduced by a From king. From observation, not even revelation. No. Very key. Okay, now this brings us into a very interesting subject because then when we get into Malachi. Hmm. And, and actually, in, in, in chapter 2, you find that he actually kisses the priest. Not the congregation. Not the congregation. <laughs> he actually... The audience actually starts in chapter 1. Hmm. Why have you not regarded me as a father? Da, da, da. Yeah. So you could make it as if it was a. The whole nation. The whole nation. But then he then says, "You have given to me," yeah. which then introduces the priest to say, "No child of Israel will mm. bring a, mm. a, a, a sacrifice which was blemished, mm. but only the priest yes. will accept yeah. something that was of blemish." Yes. 
So, so that's where the whole subject. So, if you look at it that way, then you come to the New Testament. We don't have no priest. Okay. We only have one priest. Mm -hmm. thing. Now, let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. We're not saying uh, don't do it or do it. Mm -hmm. You decide. You decide. The Bible is very clear. Yeah. It guides you. <laughs> Which is the whole idea is that uh, when you are then listening to another person a lot of time, mm. you're not making that decision to yeah. say, I'm going to do it all um, otherwise. Yeah. And so I, I like that particular point there because we are the ones who are deciding mm. whether we do. If Paul says free will offering. Mm. We are the ones who are deciding to do that. Ezra says, when, uh, Zechariah says, mm. there's too much of it. Yeah. Let's build a storehouse. Yes. That's a decision. He said, made. yes. So of a king, actually. So, if you want to do it, mm. guess what? Yeah. You come to that decision yeah. and actually do so. Yeah. But you're going to cover some of the scriptures and point out some of the verses, key verses, to come into this conclusion. On his video, I want to be very clear, he only states the scriptures. Yeah. Then you can go and do your own studies. So, any particular way to wrap up around the particular subject of saying, the storehouse was not a command. Mm. It, it, it was, just, just to finish, it was an issue of saying, uh, I, as somebody who has realized an error that was there, mm. let me correct the error by, um, it was an error, I think it was, we cannot say it was under duress, but it was under an, an impression that we cannot uh, throw away the food or the things that are it coming. Has it is a benefit because what we're going to have is that the children of Levites, they are, when they are hungry or maybe they, when there is a drought, they can come and get, because obviously they are not going to get more from, from, the, from the children of Israel who were, who were giving them. So it was an issue of, um, um, so you as an individual, you just need to, to look at these verses and come, be to a, the come to the decision and understand why it was there and why the stores don't be um, the, you remember Malachi it was uh, don't be twisted because Malachi it was now a reminder okay it's you almost that part yeah, it, it, uh, yeah it was it was now a reminder it was not a initial um, giving of the statu statute so that you will cover on this video on here just wanted us to focus in on that particular point the storehouse was not a revelation the storehouse was a decision of a king seeing plenty of the blessing of God.